megastars, the millionaires, the masterminds. Seriously wealthy, glamorous and influential. Pop queens, real estate kings and literary royalty. Everything they touch turns to gold. She took a little Italian girl from New York and some artistic talent and built an empire based on one name, Madonna. She is the highest earning female singer of all time with an estimated worldwide album sales of 175 million and 75 million singles. Emerging from the greed is good decade, the 80s, Madonna showed us a whole new role model for modern women. She is arguably the first woman to have total control over her music, her image and her career. Madonna holds the record for the top grossing concert tour by a female artist. Her confessions tour took 260.1 million US dollars. And all this from some very humble beginnings. In 1982, Madonna signed a singles deal with Warner Brothers for $5,000 per song. Her first album, which contained the three hits Holiday, Borderline and Lucky Star, went on to sell 8 million worldwide. In her controversial concerts and music videos, Madonna has expressed her sexuality and subverted religious iconography and gender archetypes. Far from alienating her audience, they've come back year after year, wanting more, even as ticket prices rise. Everything you can to escape the pain of life that you know. Never one to back off from a shameless cross promotion, in 1989, Madonna signed an endorsement deal to debut her new song, Like a Prayer, in a Pepsi commercial. And from there, it's been one great money-making idea after another. Whether it's reinventing herself time and time again as a performer, or exploiting her ability to influence fashion, dance styles, pop music, and even feminism. Critics have often made the claim that Madonna's provocative style is an attempt to disguise an absence of talent but audiences aren't bored yet. Her concerts and cutting-edge music videos constantly set new standards in technological and artistic innovation. And she's still laughing all the way to the bank, exploiting every possible commercial and creative opportunity, perfectionist in art and ruthless in business. Fresh kick, thick hips, best believe me. I'm a Donna, about to hurt them like a tag team. You were lovers and I got jeans. We walk by, people ask, where, where you get, get them jeans? Get into the groove. Let me show you some moves. Best to take it from me. Get into the groove. <laughs> I can do that. <laughs> Extending her sphere of influence to even the very young, Madonna has published a series of children's books including the English Roses, which was launched in over 100 countries on the same day in 30 languages. The book is now available in 40 languages and in more than 110 countries worldwide and has now sold over 500,000 copies. What does she have to show for all that money and fame? A very prestigious art collection for one, including works by Picasso. A cosy marriage to film director Guy Ritchie. Oh, and a Razzie Award for Worst Actress for their collaboration on their first film, And Turkey, Swept Away. A setback for less immortals perhaps, but not for someone as rich and famous as Madonna. The girl who grew up to have everything.
If I asked you to think of a flamboyant business tycoon in America, there's one that towers above them all. Donald Trump loves money, makes money, attracts money, and attracts beautiful women that love money. If he stopped to calculate all that phenomenal wealth, he'd lose too much time making money. So let's do it for him, shall we? Donald Trump doesn't have to worry about not getting an invite to a New York premiere. He owns most of the red carpet, sidewalk, bricks and mortar that make up the Big Apple. The most notable real estate king in America, Trump currently owns over 18 million square feet of prime Manhattan real estate, and that's just the start. He owns so many skyscrapers and casinos, he named them all after himself. How else to distinguish his towers against the urban skyline? There's the Trump Tower, valued at 288 million. And for something different, the Trump World Tower, worth 290 million. The magnate bought the Trump Wall Street building in 1996 for about 35 million and renovated it. It's now worth a cool 260 million. But life isn't all tiresome real estate acquisitions and building permits. There's also the heady mix of perfume, instant tan, and adoring attention he gets as the owner of the annual Miss Universe contest. It was a no-brainer. Where can I find myself surrounded by the most beautiful women in the world, all vying for my approval? And to up the ante, let's throw in some fun palaces to wine and dine the ladies and throw around some of that hard-won cash. Trump owns a sizeable stake in the Trump-branded casinos, the Taj Mahal, the Plaza and the Marina. A word of warning though to anyone attempting to imitate the Donald, he made his money in real estate, not on the blackjack table. What's missing? Why, a lovely young wife, of course. Trump married Melania Noss, 24 years his junior, at Trump's Mar-a-Lago estate in Palm Beach, Florida, in 2005. The estate has 118 rooms, including 33 bathrooms. So he's the man who has everything. But what about that gnawing desire to be a TV star? It's one thing to be a brilliant businessman in private, but where's the applause? Then came the reality TV show, The Apprentice, billed as the ultimate job interview. The show has some young executive hopefuls pitted against each other, battle it out for a job with the host and executive producer, Donald Trump. The corporate gladiators fight it out for the position that starts at $250,000 a year. Not bad for a young tycoon in training. And it should be a fun little game until you hear the boss's fateful catch cry, you're fired, in which case, you're fired, and you'll probably never work in this town again. The hardly humble Trump has published numerous books and DVDs on the secrets of success, including the unambiguous bestseller, How to Get Rich. In a nation obsessed with success, Donald Trump and his giant-sized personality remain a fascination for the public. In his books, the billionaire says there's nothing wrong with having a giant ego. In fact, it's what separates the winner from the losers. And he ought to know. Household name, billionaire and part-time superhero, everybody loves Oprah Winfrey. She personifies trust. When Oprah talks, millions all over the world listen. Oprah Winfrey is the first ever African-American woman billionaire and has helped change the future for her race 
as a role model and altruist. It all began in 1986 with a break in a little talk show called Oprah, which became the highest rated, longest running talk show in American television history. The adoption controversy, Madonna's side of the story. What do you want to say to all those people who are attacking you saying that you did this as a publicity stunt? The exclusive interview. The key was women. She knew them, knew their fears and desires. They tuned in, all 14 million of them. That means influence. Influence means power. Power means money and lots of it. Born in rural poverty, then raised by a mother on welfare in the ghetto, Winfrey became a millionaire at age 32 when her talk show went national. Because of the amount of revenue the show generated, Winfrey was in a position to negotiate ownership of the show and start her own production company. At age 41, Winfrey became the richest woman in entertainment, the richest African-American of the 20th century, the first black woman billionaire in world history. Now comes the fun part. What to do with all that outrageous fortune? Ideas are only limited by her imagination. At the helm of her own production company, she creates feature films, primetime TV specials and commercial DVDs. From the screen to the stage, Oprah has produced a Broadway musical version of the film The Colour Purple. The show provides much needed roles for talented African Americans and not so needed extra income for the self-made billionaire. But all that money doesn't just go on silk taffeta and Egyptian cotton sheets. Oprah Winfrey has been described as the greatest black philanthropist of all time. In the wake of Hurricane Katrina, Oprah asked her viewers to open their hearts, and they did, to the tune of 11 million US dollars. Winfrey matched the figure with another 10 million US dollars and dozens of homes were rebuilt before the one year anniversary of the devastating hurricane. Winfrey began by putting 250 African American men through college and then got the inspiration for the Oprah Winfrey Leadership Academy for girls in South Africa. Inspired by her own humble past, the Academy gives poor but academically gifted girls a decent head start in life and the potential for the kind of leadership shown by their world famous benefactor who invested 40 million US dollars in the school. Fans have watched the evolution from the early days of her sensationalising TV show through to a more positive, spiritually uplifting program marked by book clubs, celebrity interviews, self-improvement segments and philanthropic forays into world events, in this way encouraging others to give. Oprah's charity, Angel Network, which calls on viewers to make a difference, has raised more than 51 million US dollars for people living in poverty. Described as having more credibility than the president, you'd have to say this talk show host certainly puts her money where her mouth is. He's the golden boy, some would say a living god. Women love him and men just marvel at the talent and all that money for just playing football. David Beckham doesn't have too much left on his to-do list. When you're the best, you're paid the most and you're worshipped by fans worldwide. Sure, he might spend a lot of time looking in the mirror, but he's not exactly taking a long hard look at himself. In fact, I think he's pretty happy with what he sees. David Beckham, or simply Bex, is the greatest pop star of football. He's got the whole package and he knows it. In 
It all started in the early 90s when he was recruited by Manchester United, the team he dreamt of playing for since he was a boy. And it's been one long dream come true ever since. He wasn't too bright, had a working class accent. Just want to carry on each season and try and do as well as we can. And not a lot of sophistication, but still, Beckham was on his way to conquering the world. Beckham's hookup with Spice Girl Victoria Adams was the beginning of saturation celebrity, sealed with a 65,000 US dollar engagement ring. Tabloids paid one and a half million dollars US for wedding snaps of Britain's new royalty, who moved into a mansion near London, nicknamed, of course, Beckingham Palace. With Victoria driving his transformation, to marketable new millennium man, Beckham now earns more from endorsements than any other player in world football. Sure, he can sell sporting goods for Adidas and Nike with the Beckham Golden Seal of Approval. But he's also the $9 million face of Gillette. He pitches sunglasses for police, clothes for Marks and Spencer, soft drinks for Pepsi and mobile phones for Motorola. He also highly recommends drinking British milk and eating Snickers bars. The Beckhams set fashion trends every time they step out and both are sought after spokespeople for clothing designers, health and fitness specialists, fashion magazines, perfume and cosmetics manufacturers, and hairstylists. The Beckhams were reportedly paid a spectacular 13.7 million US dollars to launch Beckham's own fragrance line, David Beckham Instinct, in the US. Beckham's determination to be the most successful football player in the world gained currency in 2003 when he was drafted by Manchester United for an extraordinary 42 million US dollars to legendary Spanish club Real Madrid. Man U fans were devastated. Had he sold out or was he now just accepting the inevitable? He was a fully global brand as Beckham's pay packet fattened up to over 170,000 US dollars a week, so did his wardrobe. So what's next for the conquering hero? The last frontier, of course, the USA. And so far has he come from media shyness that he's agreed to take part in a reality series all about his family's new life in America. Will it be Beckham who? Or will he find a new continent of admirers bending over to tie the megastar's bootlaces? David Beckham's arrival is a coup for US soccer and it's hoped he will revitalise the sport along with further lining his sizeable pockets in the land of opportunity. She was told to give up fantasy by an English teacher. Thankfully, she didn't. Now the world has Harry Potter and JK Rowling has a lot of money. She sold the first novel, Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone, to Bloomsbury in the UK for the richly sum of 4,000 US dollars, which is probably the sum she now spends on bubble bath alone. J.K. Rowling has the astonishing title of the first billionaire author in literary history. How did it happen? Sure, the boy wizard has massive appeal, and Rowling does have a supreme ability to structure a galloping good story, but not even the author herself could have predicted the complete world domination of the fictional series. And what an industry, making millionaires of three young actors into the bargain. Accolades abound as the world tries to find ways to express their gratitude for the gift of Potter. He was in such Potter. a bad mood by the time he got to divination that he had quite forgotten his career's appointment with Professor McGonagall, remembering it only when Ron asked him why he wasn't in her office. 
he hurtled back upstairs and arrived out of breath only a few minutes late. Sorry, Professor, he panted as he closed the door. Since the release of the first Harry Potter book in 1997, the books have gained immense popularity, critical acclaim and commercial success worldwide, spawning films, video games and assorted merchandise. The seven books published to date have collectively sold more than 325 million copies and have been translated into more than 64 languages. When the seventh and last book in the series, Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows was released, publishers announced a record-breaking 12 million copies for the first print run in the US alone. The whole world has collectively waited with bated breath for each adventure, but the tension, not to mention the tight security, before the release of the final book was unheard of in literary history. So, what's her secret? How did Rowling stumble on an idea to ignite the world? An idea that would delight an audience of children and adults included. The widest market possible? One theory is that Potter deals with universal themes, the biggest issues affecting us all, morality and mortality. It was a good artistic decision and a great commercial one. Bloomsbury's initial print run of the first book was only a thousand copies. If you were to find one today, it would be worth 25,000 pounds. Literary fame is one thing, but every author secretly wants to hear those two magic words, film rights. In 1998, Warner Brothers purchased the film rights to the writer's first two novels for a seven-figure sum. Rowling stipulated considerable artistic control in her contract, unprecedented in Hollywood's usual treatment of authors. One of her conditions is that all filming is done in Britain with an all-British cast. It's hard to believe, but life wasn't always fun and games at Hogwarts. It was in 1994 when single mother Rowling, unemployed and living on state benefits in Scotland, began to write. Not the ideal working conditions she now affords in a luxurious 19th century estate on the banks of the River Tay, Scotland. J.K. Rowling is currently ranked as the 13th richest woman in Britain. She is considered one of the 100 most powerful celebrities in the world. We say, long may she reign.